In lesson 3 on analytical geometry for grade 11, we are going to have a look at the equation of a straight line. We already know that the standard equation for a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c. Here, m indicates the gradient and c the y-intercept of the line. And these two values can be calculated in different ways depending on the information that was given. If two coordinates are given, we can use the gradient formula to calculate the gradient. Or they can tell you that two lines are parallel or perpendicular to each other, and then we know that the gradients are the same, or the gradient's product equals minus 1. And then we have two exceptions. So firstly, if we have a horizontal line, then the gradient is 0, and the line is simply y is equal to the constant. Or we can have a vertical line, and a vertical line does not have a y-intercept, but the x value always stays the same, so we can say x is equal to a constant. Example 1. Determine the equation of the straight line that goes through the point 1 minus 4, and in A is parallel to the line y is equal to 2x minus 3. To give the equation of a straight line, we need to determine a value for m and c. In A, we are given that the line we want to calculate is parallel to the line with a gradient of 2. And for parallel lines, we know that the gradients are the same. So here we can say we have an equation of y is equal to 2x plus c. And now we just need to calculate the value of c. For this, we are given an extra coordinate, which means we have another x and y value. So I'm going to substitute the y value of minus 4 and the x value of 1 into my equation and solve c by saying minus 4 minus 2 is minus 6. And that means that the equation of line a is 2x minus 6. In question b, they are saying that the line we need to calculate is perpendicular to the line y is equal to 2x minus 3. And for perpendicular, we know the product of the two gradients have to be equal to minus 1. So we know that this gradient of ours is the reciprocal and the opposite sign of the given gradient. So again, to solve c, we're going to substitute in the extra coordinate. So we will have minus 4 is equal to minus a half times 1 plus c. And now we need to solve c, and that will be minus 3.5. So my second equation is y is equal to minus a half x minus three and a half. Example two, determine the equation of the straight line that goes through the points minus two, three and one, nine. When you're given two coordinates on your straight line, you can immediately start off calculating your gradient using the formula. So once again, it helps if you then go and number them as x and y1 and x and y2 to ensure that you don't make sign mistakes when you substitute. So when I substitute, I will now have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and that will give me 6 over 3, which is a gradient of 2. So now I know that in my equation, my m value is 2. And once again, I can calculate the c value by substituting in a coordinate. I'm going to choose the coordinate 1, 9 when I substitute, just because it makes the substitution a little less risky with signs. And then I will see that c is 7. And that means that the equation for this line is y is equal to 2x plus 7. Remember that we can ask you the same question in different ways. So here, we could have also given you the sketch and asked you to calculate the equation of the straight line. And because there are two coordinates given on the line, you would follow the same process. Example 3. Determine the equation of the line that goes through the points minus 3, minus 1 and minus 3, 7. If you start off immediately calculating your gradient here, you will see that you get a zero in the denominator. That means you have an undefined gradient. If you can draw a sketch of this, you will see that it is a vertical line. And a vertical line has a change in x of 0. 
That is why when you realize that the x-coordinates of the two points given are the same, you shouldn't waste your time calculating the gradient because you need to realize this is a vertical line and a vertical line has a standard form of x is equal to a constant, which in this case will be the constant minus 3. Example 4. Determine the equation of the straight line that goes through the points 2, 4 and 5, 4. Similar to example 3, here you need to realize that this time the two y values are exactly the same and that there therefore will be a change of y of 0 and that is because it's a horizontal line. And for a horizontal line you need to know that the standard form is y is equal to a constant and in this case that constant will be 4 and that is your answer. Example 5. Determine the points of intersection of the following two straight lines and we are given y is equal to 2x minus 1 and 3x plus 2y is equal to 12. Now point of intersection means that we are looking for a coordinate, an x and a y value, that lies on both of these straight lines. And for that you were taught two different methods in grade 10. You could choose to either use substitution or elimination. In our case of this example, our one equation is already in the standard form and that means that we can immediately substitute that into y's place in the second equation. So I'm going to start off with my second equation and in the place of y I'm going to write a bracket first and then I'm going to take my first equation and substitute the value of y from the first equation which is 2x minus 1. Now I'm going to multiply out, get all the x's on one side and solve x. And now that I have my x value, I can substitute that back into my first equation to solve y. So I'm going to have 2 times 2 minus 1, so y will be 3. And the question here was to determine the point of intersection and a point is an x and a y value. Here it is also important to realize that we could have given you the sketch, so this could have formed part of a bigger question. 